Okay, let's look at some uh, MOS electrostatics and the MOS capacitor. I just introduced a, a little bit about MOS devices and um, let's look at this uh, stack here, okay? Um, what you have here is a, a little bit um, like a Schottky diode that we have seen before, but you have an insulating layer in between. So you have a metal oxide semiconductor and uh, it looks a bit similar to what we had before when we discussed the Schottky diode. But again, you have this insulator in between here, okay? And the usual stuff we do when we draw band edge diagrams, right? We will draw, start from a flat Fermi level, we figure out uh, what the dopings are, we figure out what the work functions are, we figure out what the electron affinity is, and have the vacuum level that uh, joins these heterostructures together and we draw band edge diagrams. Okay, so we'll do this over and over and we'll also do it in, for these MOS devices now. Keep in mind there is no charge in the insulator. Hopefully the oxide is of very high quality so you don't build in charges. It would be bad if these charges would be there and they would be even worse if they move around. Uh, but if there's no charge, then it's a perfect dielectric and that means the, the electric field here is constant, okay? There's no modulation in the electric field. Remember Poisson equation, right? Uh, rho, right? And if there's no rho, there is no... Um, um, the gradient of this uh, is zero, okay? All right. A change of the gradient. All right, so let's look at this idealized MOS capacitor again. So we start from the vacuum level, we have the oxide uh, um, or the insulator like this, and we draw uh, the um, uh, electron affinity and work functions in here and draw the Fermi level in there. So this is the so-called uh, flat band sketch uh, of the uh, MOS device and we'll refer to that as the ideal condition because it helps us uh, serve us as a reference level. Okay. All right. So if there is no uh, um, charge, then there is no electric field, and there is uh, no built-in potential, right? So it is basically flat, like this. So it's a repeat of the slide before, and you have flat potentials, flat electric field, and flat, uh, uh, flat uh, free charges, okay? So now we're going to apply a voltage and we're going from equilibrium to some DC voltage. Okay, if that's the case we will have band bending. Okay, and a uh, couple of things you notice to start out with there's a constant electric field here in the oxide, okay, because there's no charges in it. And just like with the Schottky diode where we've argued that there's so much density of states available in the metal that there is negligible band bending here. So there is no band bending we'll need to consider in the metal, okay, because of the large density of states. If we apply a negative bias, we pull up the Fermi level on the left side here, and the Fermi level will stay flat in equilibrium here. Remember we won't have current flow so the Fermi level must be flat, um, but we have this uh, say structure grounded uh, on the P side. We will have band bending, okay? We, but there's no current, okay? Um, what we do have in this uh, configuration here, we will have holes that are sitting here and we have an abundance of electrons as a sheet charge that sits right at the interface. There's no band bending, as I mentioned before. We're applying a, um, a negative voltage like this, and we pull up the uh, um, 
the metal side, so we push electrons in the system and they will be counterbalanced by an electrostatic field that will ultimately some, uh, have electrons accumu uh, holes accumulating there. So this is accumulation for the holes. Okay, so the majority carriers of holes is piling up against the interface over there under this bias condition. All right, so we call that region accumulation. Again, we have holes piled up here for a negative of uh, applied voltage. Okay, now let's uh, apply voltage in the other direction. So uh, we apply the voltage pulling down this potential, okay? Then we will begin to bend the bands here, and that means we're pushing the Fermi level away from, uh, from the valence band edge. We're depleting this region, just like, in a sense, what we had with a PN junction, where we have now exposed acceptors, which build a negative charge, and they're not mobile. Okay, So just like what we had in a PN diode, we have a depletion region where we're pushing out free carriers and expose the donors. Uh, sorry, the acceptors in this case. Okay, And they are immobile, they don't move, and we basically push the holes that normally would co cover them away um, uh, from, from the interface, okay? If we apply, so this is called depletion. So the channel, there is no channel here, there is depleted, uh, uh, there's no holes, no electrons. Now, if we apply an even higher voltage, then we're bringing the Fermi level here closer to the conduction band edge. And if that's the case, we have the exposed acceptors and we're beginning to pile up electrons against this interface. These are now mobile electrons and these are the minority carriers in this uh, uh, P-type uh, device, right? So we have this hole doped, but we're talking about an accumulation of electrons here, as shown in the green box here, okay? That's called inversion. So, we invert the channel. We go from a p-type majority uh, carrier concentration to an induced inverted electron concentration that lives at this interface, okay? And we'll talk about the concentration level and the band bending and all that in some detail throughout this section. Okay, so again, accumulation means we have the majority carriers here holes piling against the interface. Depletion means there's no electrons, no holes in the semiconductor close to the interface at all. All we have is an exposed layer or, or region of dopants. In this case, they are acceptors, negative charge and we have electrons that are piled up on the metal side here. For an even higher bias, we go into inversion. We go from a typical, uh, from the dopant uh, determined p-type level into electron densities that where electrons are piled up at this interface. That's called inversion. All right, so where do these charges come from? Okay, on the... Um, accumulation side, they certainly are just provided by the battery, okay? So you basically have holes that can travel from here to here from the supply side, okay? They are the majority carriers. All right, um, on the depletion region, we basically push them out. We push the carriers away from the uh, interface and they just get pushed to the base contacts, okay? Now, so in both of these cases, in accumulation and depletion, carriers are supplied by the body contact. Okay? Or, okay? Now, if you have inversion, then you somehow need to get carriers in here. Okay? And that happens through generation, by thermal generation. Um, the Fermi level is closer to the um, conduction band, and you have 
Shockley Reed Hall generation of carriers. Okay. All right, so how fast does this happen? On the left, the um, accumulation is all done with majority carriers, right? It's a uh, P-doped uh, uh, device on the right, majority carriers, connectivity is uh, high, uh, it's dielectric response really fast, from a 0.1 picosecond or so, really fast. Now, to get uh, carriers like electrons up here, or even an inversion, uh, you will need to have Shockley Reed Hall generation, right? You use the formula for regeneration and uh, recombination and generation, but in this case, N and P is either small or negligible, and therefore generation, this is minus the generation term, right? So we're generating carriers, and that is slow compared to the dielectric relaxation, okay? So, uh, accumulation really fast, and the regions are in depletion, and um, the, the uh, behavior of the electrons, in this case the minority carriers here, are going to be slow because it's they're generated by recomb uh, by recombination trap processes. Okay. All right. So we've drawn band diagrams. Now we're going to look at some. Uh, charge characteristics in this MOS capacitor. All right, that's the next section. I'll see you there.